Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Indigo's conference call to discuss the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2024 financial results. My name is Neera, and I'll be your coordinator. At this time, the participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow today's management discussion. As a reminder, today's conference call is being recorded. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchdown phone. I would now like to turn the call to your moderator, to Ms. Richa Chhabra from the Investor Relations team of Indigo. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2024 call. We have with us our Chief Executive Officer, Peter Elbers, and our Chief Financial Officer, Gaurav Negi, and our Head of Investor Relations, Kela Shrana, to discuss the financial performance and are available for the Q&A session. Please note that today's discussion may contain certain statements on our business or financials which may be construed as forward-looking. Our actual results may be materially different from these forward-looking statements. The information provided on this call is as of today's date and we undertake no obligation to update the information subsequently. We will upload the transcript of prepared remarks by day end the transcript of the Q&A session will be uploaded subsequently. With this, let me hand over to the call to Peter Elbers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining the call. We announced our financial results for the fourth quarter and the financial year 2024 today. As we reflect on the financial year 2024, it's evident that we reached many new heights and ventured across new frontiers achieving numerous milestones along the way that we have translated into robust financial performance for the year. The strong execution of our strategy has yielded consistent results for us helping to achieve the targets that we had set out for ourselves as a team at the beginning of this year. For the financial year 2024, we reported our highest ever total income of around 712 billion rupees which is 27% higher than financial year 2023. In terms of profitability, we reported an annual net profit of around 82 billion rupees as against a marginal loss for the financial year 2023. Fourth quarter of financial year 24, we reported a total income of 185 billion rupees and a net profit of 18.9 billion rupees. With these results, we are now profitable for six consecutive quarters post-COVID. Also, after a period of five years, we have been profitable in all the four quarters in a financial year. These results are really a testament to the loyalty of our 107 million customers, the execution of our strategy towards new heights and across new frontiers, and the dedication of more than tens of thousands of Indigo's employees who work relentlessly and collectively. I would like to express my gratitude to each of our customers for placing their trust in us and our employees for their hard work. India is home to the world's largest population and soon will become the third largest economy in the world. In the financial year 2024, the passengers served by Indian aviation industry grew by 14.5% on a year-over-year -year basis to touch a new milestone of 184 million annual bus passengers. Apart from the overall favorable microeconomic trends in our country, such as the rise in per capita income and favorable demographics, there are new travel trends emerging, such as experiential travel, growth in spiritual tourism, and increasing demand for international travel that will continue to drive the overall growth of the Indian aviation industry. Thus, there's an immediate need for an aviation ecosystem that matches the size and potential of India. A stride forward in this direction was our firm order for 500 Airbus 320 Neo Family aircraft announced in June of last year. This order was just Indigo's largest, was not just Indigo's largest order, but also the largest ever single aircraft purchased by any airline with Airbus. Today we operate 88 domestic destinations with over 400 direct routes. Ten of these destinations were added in the last year itself. We fly and intend to fly to each airport of a certain size in the country. 
On the international network side, we have about 100 international routes to 33 international destinations from 18 Indian cities. During the financial year 2024, we launched seven new international destinations across Asia and Africa and also expanded our direct routes by 25%. Now moving to an important announcement, keeping in mind the evolving needs and aspirations of our Indian consumers. We are taking the next step in the evolution of Indigo. We will be launching a tailor-made business product on the busiest routes and business routes of the country before the end of this year. There's an ever-growing need for premium travel in India, and by launching this product, we will create a desired option for many who are aiming to travel business and perhaps for some of them for the first time in their lives. We are truly enthused by entering this new phase and we will be unveiling more information around the offering, the routes and the launch dates in coming August. So please stay tuned for more updates on the same. On the international network side, our co-chair partnerships continue to grow and we saw an impressive growth of around 45% in the numbers of passengers flown through our co-chairs in financial year 24 compared to last year. During this financial year, we signed co-chair agreement with British Airways, a memorandum of understanding of a co-chair partnership with Malaysia Airlines, and furthermore, we extended our co-chair agreement with Qantas, allowing our customers to access to seven new connections to Australia via Singapore. These new destinations and routes helped unlock remarkable opportunities for both business and leisure travelers, seeking seamless connectivity to various corners of the world. Further towards our goal of internationalization, we recently had a landmark development as we placed an order for 30 firm Airbus 350-900 aircraft. As was discussed during our last call, the significance of both our aircraft orders comprising of 500 narrow bodies and 30 wide bodies extend beyond their individual components. Together, they form a cohesive strategy, not only aimed at achieving our vision of making Indigo a global aviation player, but also help us realize India's vision of developing India into a global aviation hub. Our current pending order book of a little short of 1,000 aircraft to be delivered up to 2035 gives us long-term visibility well into the next decade. For the many years to come, we will receive a minimum of one new plane every week. And this speaks a lot about India, probably being the last frontier of aviation growth of such a high magnitude and the part Indigo is poised to play in it. Though our performance has been robust, it's essential to view these results in the context of external headwinds we face during the year. The Financial 24 saw headwinds in the form of aircraft groundings. However, we stood firm in our resolve, adapted swiftly, swiftly to change, and emerged stronger. And these results speak volumes about our team's ability to adapt and overcome these challenges. Our employees' commitment to excellence has been a critical factor in achieving our goals this year. Further, our performance has been continuously recognized as we had the honor of re receiving several pres prestigious awards and accolades, such as the Airline of the Year at the Air Transport Awards 24, the Best Low-Cost Airline in India and South Asia at the Skytrax World Airline Award, and Asia Environmental Sustainability Airline of the Year awarded by CAPA. These recognitions underscore our excellence and leadership in the market. The combination of a rapidly growing economy and our strategic initiatives positions us for the unprecedented growth. With our target of 600 plus fleet aircraft by the end of the decade in mind, we continue to develop and align people, processes and technology in line with the growing size and the scale of Indigo. In conclusion, the year gone by had some remarkable achievements and milestones which have translated into very positive financial outcomes. Looking ahead to the next financial year, while we acknowledge the presence of certain headwinds, we do so with optimism and confidence in our ability to navigate through them successfully again. Our guidance of early double-digit growth in terms of capacity and passengers on board for next year reflects our confidence in our plan, 
in place to navigate the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities that lie ahead. We're well on track towards our long-term strategic objective and investing heavily to further build upon our strong foundations. Let me now hand over to Gora to discuss the financial performance in more detail. Thank you, Peter, and good evening, everyone. For the year ended March 2024, we reported a profit of 81.7 billion rupees with a net profit margin of 11.9 compared to a net loss of 3.1 billion rupees for the year ended March 2023. Excluding the foreign exchange impact, we reported a profit of 88.9 billion rupees compared to a profit of 26.5 billion rupees for the year ended March 2023. Our capacity for the financial year increased by 21.8% as compared to the last year. We reported an EBITDA of 175.4 billion rupees for the year ended March 24 compared to an EBITDA of 73.1 billion rupees for the year ended March 23, a growth of 140% against a capacity increase of around 22%, primarily due to improvement in load factors, benign fuel and forex environment. For the quarter ended March 2024, we reported a net profit of 18.9 billion rupees with a margin of 10.6% compared to a net profit of 9.2 billion rupees and a net margin of 6.5% for the quarter ended March 23. This translates into a net margin improvement of 4.1 points. Further, we reported an EBITDA of 44.1 billion rupees with an EBITDA margin of 24.8%. For the quarter ended March 2024, the unit revenue came in at 5.13 rupees, which is about 10% higher on a year-over-year basis. The yield improvement by 7% and the load factor uh, came in strong at 86.3%, an improvement of 2.1 points on a year-over-year basis. On the cost side, the fuel cap reduced by 6.9, primarily due to a reduction in average fuel price. Looking at the non-fuel cost, the CAX-X fuel came in at 2.90 rupees, with a 14.7% higher than the same quarter last year. Further, the rupee closed weaker at a quarter end, leading to a forex loss of 1.7 billion rupees. Moving to a unit cost, X-Fuel, X-Forex, there's a year-over-year -year increase of around 9%, mainly due to cost escalation, the grounding-related costs, and increase in employee costs. Due to a strong financial performance, our liquidity has further improved as we ended the March quarter with a free cash of 208.2 billion rupees. This translates to an increase of 16.2 billion rupees as compared to the December quarter end. Furthermore, during the quarter, on account of our continued strong liquidity position and financial performance, <coughs> Crystal assigned us a long-term credit rating of AA- minus stable and a short-term credit rating of A1+. Plus. We ended the quarter with a capitalized operating lease liability of around 435 billion rupees and a total debt, including the capitalized operating lease liability of around 513 billion rupees. Our right to use asset at the quarter end were 342 billion rupees. As Peter highlighted, these results should be looked in the context of headwinds we faced during the year in the form of AOG situation. During the financial year 2024, we added 65 aircrafts, including 12 damp leased aircrafts, and during the quarter ended March 24, we added nine aircrafts to our fleet. With these additions, <coughs> Uh, the aircraft and lease extensions that we've carried out, we were able to mitigate the adverse situation well, and through all these measures, we exceeded our initial capacity guidance north of mid-teens in the financial year 2024. Currently, the AOG count remains range-bound. Going forward, we will continue to assess the situation and adjust our mitigation measures to continue to meet our growth targets. We've already provided a capacity guidance that we will broadly grow our capacity at early double digits in the financial year 2025 as compared to financial year 2024. For the first quarter of financial year 2025, we are expecting to add around 10 to 12 percent capacity compared to the same period last year, which translates to around 3 to 5 percent capacity growth on a sequential basis. With this growth projection for the first quarter of financial year 2025, we are likely to be back to the 
quarterly capacity which we had prior to the accelerated inspection of engines due to the powder metal issue. Further, we are currently experiencing similar revenue environment in Q1 2025 as compared to Q1 2024. As we look ahead, it's imperative that we acknowledge the task at hand with respect to our growth targets and cost dimensions. There are inflationary pressures in certain cost lines uh, that we are foreseeing in the next financial year. However, we remain focused on cost optimization efforts to create maximum shareholder value. What truly really sets us apart is our ability to adapt and innovate in a rapidly changing environment. Our strong foundation and focus execution on our strategy has positioned us for sustained growth in the years to come. With this, let me hand it back to Richard. Thank you, Peter and Gaurav. To answer as many questions as possible, I would like to request that each participant limit themselves to one question and one brief follow-up question if needed. And with that, we are ready for the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the land of Benay Singh from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, actually, I'll uh, just uh, uh, pick up from the comment uh, that was there in the opening statement on inflationary cost pressures. So could you talk a little bit in more detail about uh, the coming financial year, which are the line items where you see more uh, uh, cost pressures? And also, if you could uh, reflect back on FI24, any one-off expenses that you had in FI24 relating grounding, which wasn't compensated, which sort of offsets it or so. So uh, that would be my uh, question to just uh, get more details on this. Thanks. Uh, you know, in terms of inflationary pressure that we're talking about is across various line items. Uh, primarily, it's going to be around maintenance and airport fees that we've also talked in the past. So these are primarily the two line items that we are seeing inflation. Uh, outside of that, the normal course of inflation that you will see related to other expenses and employee cost which are naturally there, is also going to play their part uh, in the financial year 25. But the, the, the increased inflation levels that we are seeing is largely on, on maintenance side as well as on the airport side. Uh, but uh, these are largely high single-digit uh, inflationary pressures or uh, something more than that? Uh, high single-digit to early double digits is what we are experiencing. It's more than what we have experienced in the past, which was towards the low single digit. So there's, there's an increased level that we have seen, at least for these nine items. Uh, right, right. Thanks. And uh, uh, fair to say that uh, there is no one-off expenditure in FY24 which sort of offsets some of these things as your fleet comes back. There were some elements of cost that uh, we are still negotiating, as we said, related to grounding. So there could be a timing difference between one financial year versus the other. So barring that, there's no significant one-offs that we have. It's more okay, timing okay. that will play out between two financial years. Uh, uh, thanks, team. I'll come back in the queue. Oh. Thank you. Next question is from Lan of Amin Parin from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question was on the comment that you made that, you know, in 1Q this year, uh, we are taking a similar revenue environment um, compared to 1Q of last year. So uh, were you indicating, like, uh, in terms of the yield direction? Uh, we were indicating more on the passenger uh, RAS okay. level. So. Okay. So more okay. towards that, it's a balance between the yields and the load factors. So we're trying to see uh, okay. that the revenue comes in, in line with what we had in Q, Q1 okay. of last year. Okay. Okay. The reason I ask is because, you know, unlike most years, this year's 4Q RASC is almost similar or even slightly higher than 1Q. And normally from 4Q to 1Q, the seasonality is positive. So uh, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, uh, get some more color there. Are you expecting... 
uh, seasonally rats to flatten out nor versus the normal seasonality which is improving in this quarter? Maybe to supplement on that, I think there's there's quite a couple of uncertainties in the market today, which which makes uh, giving a precise prediction in terms of uh, of risk levels uh, difficult. So that's why we give an indication uh, compared to what it was uh, was last year. Okay, okay. And just uh, a follow up on the revenue bill itself, um, the compensation that you get uh, from uh, uh, you know the uh, the uh, suppliers on the grounded aircraft. Uh, that comes in into your other income line? Uh, it comes into revenue from operations, other uh, other operating income. Okay, okay. And there, can you give a broad sense as to, given the amount of compensation you think that's due, how much of that broadly would have come in till date? Is, is there a possibility to give a broad idea? Uh, unfortunately not. So whatever is captured, you can probably go through those financials, but uh, we're not calling out anything specific sure. for that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Vlan of Anshuman Dave from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question was regarding the uh, like spread for FI25 because you mentioned about the fact that FI24 should be looked from the perspective of headwinds we had, right? So uh, when we look at FI25, there could be a little bit of mitigation in the AOG scenario. We can have inflationary expectation, as you said. There would be also some investments or some expense towards the new business class that we are bringing in. So if you could help us, because there are multiple pluses and minuses in play in FI25, if you could give a color on the possible spread. Be directionally in FI25. Anshuman, again, we are not giving any kind of guidance related to the spread for the whole year. So we'll take it one step at a time. We give you the guidance in terms of capacity that we see for this particular quarter, as well as uh, what we see the revenue environment like. We we'll limit ourselves to that for the time being. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, if you could also uh, just on part of continuing that part in terms of aircraft on ground, have we seen the worst behind us uh, or uh, in terms of uh, that impacting the cost? Uh, is it uh, like the worst behind us? Yeah, so what we communicated, I think we speak to, uh, to a certain extent what we called out as a mid-70 number. It's still in that range that we are looking at. So we are not seeing anything significantly adverse as we sit today. But again, things will play out, but we are not expecting anything which is going to be significantly different. It's again going to be range bound. So we, to a large extent, we are where we need to be from a grounding standpoint. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll, uh... again, again, I'll just elaborate also. So one is the grounding uh, side of it, plus the other is the mitigation side of it. So like I mentioned in my commentary, we are actually looking at capacity reaching the same levels that we had in Q3. So we managed to mitigate a large part of these groundings uh, in a matter of a quarter, so as to speak. So we're back to the same levels in Q1 of 25. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, my question is related to the business product, what you kind of talked about. Uh, can you please help us understand uh, of, of, of what could be the kind of ramp up here? Because uh, you, I, 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 if I'm not wrong, you did mention about select routes where you would be using them. Uh, and uh, what could be the timeline for ramp up? Because out of the total aircraft, what we have, the number of routes we service, what do you see as the potential uh, routes which can absorb a business class kind of configuration? Because there will be a set off against the number of seats as well. And what could be the likely implications as you do this transition on your uh, existing aircraft ASC capacities? Or how should one look at uh, this transition? And how long do you think uh, 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 in terms of timeline by when you will be largely done with this particular transition, at least on the domestic side? Yeah, thank you. That's a lot. That's a lot of detailed questions. Maybe just a few words to to elucidate on this, and I try to do that in my introduction words. Uh, India is changing rapidly, and the needs of the Indian consumers are changing rapidly, and we've seen that happening over the past couple of years. So against that backdrop, and looking at the network of of Indigo, with a 
uh, quite a, a couple of routes with a very high frequency, with a lot of business-related travel, we felt collectively that this was the right moment to move into that space. So I would say it's a natural evolution, which um, uh, sort of coinciding with, with our uh, uh, turning 18 uh, by August of this year. So we see the market developing, we see Indigo developing, and we see a growing desire for our customers uh, to travel, uh, to have more travel options, uh, if you wish. That's the reason why we made this announcement today. In the announcement itself, we said it's going to be introduced before the end of the year. Of course, we have been working on this for a while already. Uh, so it's going to be introduced before the end of the year. And in the early part of August, we're going to announce more details in terms of timings, in terms of precise number of routes, in terms of exact introduction date, and so on and so forth. So um, as I said, stay tuned uh, for the further developments uh, on this. And, and Peter, just to follow up on that, uh, 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 and, and, and this is in context of the yield comment what you kind of uh, alluded to, uh, looks like we are kind of seeing some bit of uh, resistance on, uh, on, on demand, uh, given how the phase have kind of behaved generally. In that context, how should one look at uh, the business class uh, versus, say, the economic class uh, in terms of the, the yields and, and the kind of likely, what do you say, uh, 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 net impact what Indigo would face? Because uh, at one level, we are seeing, despite the constraint on capacities and across every most of the airline and, and some of the rules being dropped by many airlines or reduced frequency, you are seeing that yields are not going higher anywhere from here on. So. Uh, 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 given the price sensitivity and the uh, uh, fact that uh, 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 you're talking about business class in this environment, if you can just help us understand uh, what are the uh, what are the factors what you're seeing on, and whether any specific uh, uh, comments on whether the fare resistance what you're seeing is more on the metro non metro routes or tier two routes. Anything if you can just help us understand on the yield uh, yield uh, behavior. Yeah, well, thank you. You have the ability to put around 25 questions in one. Uh, that's well done. Um, but let me just try to give a bit of an uh, elucidation uh, to that. Uh, you made a statement that, that the yields can't go up. I don't think we phrased it like that. We gave some outlook for the first quarter, uh, and, and that's the first quarter out building blocks, if you wish. And one of these building blocks was to build on the XLR, which we have uh, ordered a few years ago, which is going to come in place somewhere next year. Another building block was internationalization. More recently, we have announced another building block, which is the 350 coming in to further stretch the, the reach uh, of Indigo. And with that, this step, what we're going to do now with this, this new premium product, which is going to be very Indigo-like in terms of uh, uh, creating a very different structure in the market, that's what we know today, uh, is precisely matching all the other building blocks so fast forward where India is going to be in 2027, which is, I think, today the latest sort of forecast is then it will be the third largest economy in the world. So if, if, if home is the third largest economy in the world, and if, if that economy continues to grow and the, the customers are more and more looking for different travel options, be it from the metros and the non-metros, for us, it's all the normal to start preparing for that now with the introduction of this business class. So I would, I would really see it as a natural evolution, uh, disconnected from whatever yield development we see quarter over quarter. I think there's a, always a lot of actualities involved, be it AOGs, be it some sort of uh, disruptions either this year or past year, be it some bad weather, be it whatever reasons are, are involving. Take, take for this step, I mean, this is a long-term step. This is not something we do on, a, on for just just drifting a, a quarter. It's part of a holistic strategy, and the holistic strategy is to continue, as Indigo has been done for the past 18 years, uh, have uh, the development of Indigo going hand-in-hand -hand with the development of the Indian economy and, if you wish, even society. And, and therefore, we continue on the very foundations of what is Indigo being made, and when we had the call around the introduction of the white body, I, I think I mentioned there the size of the order is significant enough to have input and prudent enough not to disturb the business model. And I think you should, you should see this step in the very same context. It is significant enough uh, to have impact on the routes where we want to have impact. And again, these will be all shared with you somewhere in, in the first part of August. Uh, and prudent enough to continue to serve on our on our customer promises, which made Indigo to the wonderful airline it is today. 
Thanks a lot, Peters, and wish you all the best sir, for the new phase. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Krupa Shankar Engine from Avengers Park. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the uh, pilot fatigue norms. Just wanted to get a sense whether we have any incremental information regarding that and whether it will be implemented for the entire fleet starting from June. No, Krupa, uh, currently uh, the matter is uh, sub uh, As you know that the decision has been deferred, but currently it's being taken to the courts, so we are awaiting uh, the next hearing that is due sometime in July. So there's no further comments on that. Got it. And uh, relating to your uh, fleet purchase plans, uh, are you still, I mean, is there any target set relating to what would be the portion of uh, any smaller aircrafts which will be purchased during the year, any, any uh, projections around that front? You know, we have, we have an outstanding, I think if you take the order books of all the airlines in the world, Indigo tops the charge uh, by a long margin. So the decisions taken uh, by, uh, uh, by Indigo over the past 12 months uh, basically have solidified and made that planning for the years ahead. So. Uh, beside these uh, uh, two very significant orders and steps we have announced over the past uh, year, the 500 uh, Airbus 320 and the wide body, um, is, is really creating the foundation of what we do. And furthermore, going forward, we keep all options open at all times. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a repetitive answer, but I think you have, you have seen us over time moving in the, in the direction. But we keep all options open. But the outstanding orders uh, are uh, of the, I must say, the, the backlog of orders are for us uh, a very solid basis in going forward. I understand that, uh, Peter, but but we were of intention of buying ATRs and uh, uh, to utilize our cash balances. I, that was, I thought, uh, was our plan. Uh, that no longer exists, or uh, we are just exploring option at the moment? No, that option is very much available. So we've got options to use it. We've got options to buy them also. And in the past, we've bought a few of those also. So, so those options are very much available to us. Uh, there's still a set of additional ATRs that are in the backlog that we still have. So as and when they come up for delivery, we execute the option which is best, best for us, whether it's a lease option or, a, or even to use the cash that we have. So very much available to us. So nothing is being ruled out. Understood. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pratik Kumar from Jeffrey's India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and congrats for great results. Uh, my first question is just a clarification on your cash flow statement. Uh, there is a line item phase major inspection and overall cost on leased aircraft of around 900 crores, 919 crores. Uh, this is like a maintenance cost which is capitalized, or what is it? Uh, can you just clarify? These are just the re-delivery costs that, uh, that we reflect separately. These are all related to re-delivery. Uh, but uh, is this something which has come up related to grounding, uh, or this cost used to be the cost earlier as well? No, it's as per the accounting policy that we have to disclose this, so nothing new that is coming up. And just one question on uh, CSK uh, X fuel. Uh, we generally used to think about it as like around in the range of 2.6 uh, rupees. Two point, uh, in current inflation environment uh, and with uh, last quarter clocking at 2.9, how should we look this uh, going forward for the estimate? So you're talking about cask X fuel. So there's an element of FX also in that. So there's a sizable amount of FX that is also impacting. Uh, excluding that, obviously, there's an impact from an AOG standpoint. Uh, our overall ESKs went down this quarter, as we mentioned, because of AOGs going up. So there's a dimension of that. And then the remainder is largely because of inflationary pressures that we've spoken about. So a combination of these are pushing up the, the cask X fuel, uh, X fuel portion. And uh, as the ASKs continue to start growing upwards for us with the capacity coming back, uh, we are hopeful to bring this particular unit cost down. Sure. So, so this should trend down uh, uh, from here uh, 
despite like that inflation comment which was there earlier in the call. So this number should come down adjusted for the items which are there in Q4. Yes, it should. Uh, like I said, if my capacity continues to grow, it will obviously because we had a reduced capacity. So there's an element of capacity coming down which naturally on a per unit basis pushes up the cash X fuel portion. As my capacity comes back again in Q1, uh, this particular unit cost will start trending downwards, subject to, again, in terms of subject to, again, what the inflationary pressures are going to be. Uh, sure, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lionel Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, just one question. So in terms of damp places also, are we uh, at the peak of it? Because, uh, I mean, there's been no increase uh, in terms of like 13 damp places uh, versus what it was actually last quarter. So, uh, I mean, we had some plans of like taking uh, another like 20, 25 aircrafts from the secondary market. So uh, is that happening or are we at the top of it in terms of damp places? You know, what I think the approach you have seen for us is a approach whereby we give a capacity guidance to the market and then we start executing the mitigating measures which are into that. And of course, whenever we give you that capacity guidance, we have, we have done uh, already our homework on those mitigating measures. So when we set for the year which just closed FY24, we said in the north of the mid-teens that was a prudent approach because eventually we did, we did slightly more thanks to the effectiveness of all these measures. We have now given a capacity guidance for this, this year FY25 uh, and also there that is solidified by not only a stabilizing AOG situation as, as uh, Gorov just elucidated to, but also the damp leases we have in place. And we continue to work with potential opportunities to, uh, to increase it, to adjust it. I think for us it's very important to have that flexibility. So we continue to have a, a close look at, at the market, uh, but at this point in time there's no additional uh, um, plans other than the ones which are communicated already. Right, got it. Just a follow-up, your A321 NEO fleet has been like uh, almost range one from the last uh, two, three quarters. So anything to read into that or it's like uh, it will get adjusted automatically? Sorry, I didn't get that question. I mean the A321 NEO fleet, uh, around 93, 94 aircraft, so that has remained constant since Q2 FY24. Uh, so is there anything on the from Airbus side of like slowing deliveries of 321 NEOs, anything of that sort, or uh, it's like it's not? No, there, there's nothing. We just <coughs> happen to have a quarter with uh, somewhat lesser number of, of deliveries, as was mentioned in uh, in Gorav's text. As if I recall well, he mentioned nine, nine of deliveries, and they happen to be as we continue to go forward. Uh, there happened to be a mix of the 320s and 321. So this was all uh, pretty much according to the plan. Uh, and according to the planning which we had with Airbus, and again, there's there's fluctuations month over month, and there's fluctuations in the mixture of 320s and 321. So I, I don't think you should read anything else in that other than, than those fluctuations. Right, got it. Thank you so much, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lan of Achal Kumar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Actually, may I request to unmute your line and go ahead with the question, please? Due to no response, we move on to the next participant. Next question is from line of Arpit Shah from Stalin Asset. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. You're on the board. Yeah, I just wanted to understand, like, pre-pandemic, uh, our dividend payouts were closer to 100%. And since our net worth has become positive again, what kind of... Uh, payouts we could see in the future going ahead? Uh, difficult question because we'll have to take it to the board to, to get the, the necessary approvals. But uh, while our net worth has become positive, uh, we're still negative as far as the overall retained earnings is concerned, which is the accumulated reserves that we have in order to pay the dividends. So once we cross that threshold, uh, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll take the necessary steps to then work towards uh, defining along with obviously the board what the dividend levels need to be. So a difficult question right now to answer because we are not there yet. 
Got it. And uh, one last question. Uh, in Q1 FY24, we had an impact of one of the competitor airlines uh, uh, going bankrupt. And that's all. That's, that actually gave us a very big tailwind on the RAS cask spread, which probably delivered, we probably delivered the highest spread in our history. So how should we look at Q1 FY25? What kind of spread? Like, is it going to be something which what you've done in Q1 FY24? Given that we already given some guidance on the inflationary pressures on LinkedIn and. Arpit, sorry to interrupt you. Can you please speak for the handset? One sec. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, in Q1 FY24, we did see an impact on the competitor headlines going bankrupt. And we saw a very big tailwind on our RAS cask spread, uh, leading us to deliver the highest RAS cask spread in our history. So how should we look at Q1 FY25? Again, that we've already spoken about some inflationary pressures on airport fees and maintenance growing in double digit. So how should we look at that number? You've already uh, alluded to us to some uh, 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 guidance on the RASC, but just to have some better clarity. Uh, I, I think you were answering the question because, I, like I said, the revenue is in line with uh, what we had last year. I've shared that the cost pressures are there, so so you can you can draw a conclusion in terms of the spread from there on. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be a repeat of what we had from a spread standpoint, where we were last uh, last year, same quarter. So there are some pressures that we have, but uh, on the whole, the fact is that we are also going to have a increased capacity level versus last year. I gave that guidance also that our capacity is going to grow from 10 to 12 percent. So a combination of those, I think you can work out what Q1 25 is going to be like. And the 2.9 cask numbers start trending downwards, right? That's really good earlier in the call. It will. So like I, I mentioned, so again, uh, not to forget there's an increased levels of the increase that you're seeing year over year is also from the fact that we have AOGs. And like we've said that there is certain compensation that comes and sits at the other revenue, uh, other income levels also. So what you see as a cost increase has an offset sitting in the revenue side also. So that's why you're seeing that. But on a net basis, on a net basis, it washes off. But overall, as we start pushing up our capacity, hopefully we're able to, obviously, we're focused on cost optimization. We push those levels. We're hopeful that on a unit basis, the cost, excluding the AOG, is going to be range bound. The increase is largely around of AOG and offset sitting in the revenue, and then the inflationary pressures that I talked about, also with the fact that we've not grown the capacity the way we would have wanted to because we were hit by an AOG. We are coming back to the Q3 levels again, what we were at. So so all these variables are were there, but uh, beyond Q1, we see a more stabilization as far as our capacity is concerned because we would have, like again, what we mentioned, uh, at least from a range bound standpoint, we would have reached a level of uh, normalized AOG levels that we have kind of guided everyone towards. Uh, Arpit, sorry to interrupt you. May I request you to come back, please? Thank you. Thank you. Requesting all the participants to kindly use handsets while asking a question. Next question is from the line of Koshagra from Wolfish Capital Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just two questions. One, uh, on the international side, first, uh, if you can uh, share uh, the international revenue share uh, and profit share in FI24 if possible. And uh, a related question on the international side is, uh, how big would be the contribution of uh, code share arrangements in your international revenue? And uh, if you think about it uh, from the longer term perspective, uh, having own white bodies, uh, would it in any way uh, uh, hinder the code share arrangements which you would uh, have at that point of time? That's my first question. No. Well, so our international contribution, uh, uh, as we've guided earlier also, obviously it's reached the levels of close to 27% on the ASK terms. On the revenue terms, it's again, between, it ranges between 20 to 25. So on a given quarter, it can range between a 20 to 25. So that's, that's on the international side. Obviously, we have code share. We've got eight code share partnerships that we have. They are in the early stages of, uh, some are in the early stages, some are mature. Uh, they roughly contribute in probably mid, mid kind of a single digit 
uh, range, uh, but they've been growing, as we mentioned in our kind of uh, opening statements also. Those kind of arrangements have been growing uh, at a at an incremental pace for us. So again, these are positive kind of uh, indicators for us in terms of our ability to reach the international destinations, although be it through court shares right now. Right, and do they, I mean, uh, having own wide, wide body, do they, uh, does that any way hinder the court share arrangements which you would have at that point of time, right, uh, over the longer term? You know, it's all part of a holistic strategy, as we elucidated to earlier. Indigo used to be a very domestic-heavy uh, airline with 90% of its, its operation on the domestic network. We launched uh, two years ago a trajectory to go more international, and I think we gave a guidance of moving our capacity share up to 25, then to 27, and then the objective to move in the range of 30% of international capacity. So we're, we're moving in that direction, and clearly, whenever the XLR will come in, that number will go up. What the co-chairs are doing are, are, are in fact, twofold. One of the co-chairs, or part of the co-chairs, I should say, is a co-chair of some of the foreign airlines on Indigo's domestic network. Uh, that doesn't present any international exposure per se, but it exposes us to international consumers and start to work together. The two other ones, the one we're having with Turkish Airlines and with, with Qantas, are really connecting to international flights of Indigo and then connecting in Istanbul and Singapore, respectively. Those are really preparing us for the next stage of operation, and, and by the time the white body will come in, we will be able to fly to many different parts of the world directly from, from India. And the good news is that at that point in time, a lot of these consumers have already had the experience to fly uh, with, with Indigo, and we'll see how these partnership evolve over time and how they will further grow and develop going forward. Sure, that's helpful. Uh, the small one, uh, the second question, the last one, uh, the, uh, if you can clarify, uh, uh, is there any sort of a uh, possibility of you going for further orders of uh, 100 odd planes on the ATR side, which was there in the news articles? Uh, uh, any 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 clarification on that side? Yeah, I think the topic of fleet came came up a bit earlier um, during this call also, and and uh, sorry to be a bit uh, repetitive, if not consistent in my answer. We keep all options open at all times. Uh, to serve our customers and drive growth for our organization going forward. So we've had a, we've had a good set of orders and an enormous amount of planes to be delivered. Uh, and with that, as I said, we keep all options open at all times. All right. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Arvind Sharma from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, first question on the business product side, uh, is it uh, just the um, the seats and everything or is there a loyalty program which can come through as well? Um, well earlier today I mentioned that we will, uh, we will um, unveil uh, more specificities of the, of the product itself in, uh, in August. Uh, but to your question, earlier we have already shared that we are uh, working to enhance our loyalty program. We have a, a program today, as you, as you may be aware of, uh, and we've announced in earlier calls that we are working to enhance that program as well going forward. Trust that that's in addition or apart from the business product. Yeah, there are two different things, but, but uh, they are all part of the same strategy uh, to address the Indian market and the evolving needs of, of the Indian consumers. So we have a, a loyalty program in place today, or rather a sort of co-branded uh, credit card system in place today. We have, that's, that is there. Uh, and as part of the of meeting the evolving need of the Indian consumers, we announced already earlier that we'll, we'll further enhance the program, details to be unveiled. And of course, you can connect the dots between all the different steps we're taking, internationalization, wide body order, now this product, it's all, it's all part of a very cohesive and integral strategy. And when we said earlier, two years ago, towards new heights and across new frontiers, there's a lot of different uh, elements and ingredients, and slowly, slowly, you would see them coming uh, all together, or rather, not so slowly, slowly, actually quite fast. You see them all coming together in, uh, in uh, actual implementation. Got it. 
Thank you so much. Just one uh, question on the accounting part. Uh, there was a tax credit this quarter. Uh, going forward in fiscal 25, uh, how many tax credits are there still? I mean, if you could give us some guidance about the effective tax rate for fiscal 25. Uh, nothing planned in terms of tax credit. This is just a DTA uh, that we've recognized in this particular quarter. Uh, again, we've got a significant amount of losses that we had incurred during the pandemic. So given though the extent of those losses, we do not foresee any kind of a tax burden that will come on Indigo, at least in the next year. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for taking my question. That's all from my side. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from line of Sai Siddhartha from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations. Are you on sounding this uh, Can you hear me well now? Slightly better. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, firstly, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, I wanted to have a, a bit of clarity on how to look at the yield, given the 4Q yield uh, was on similar lines to what we have seen in the first quarter as well. Sorry, not clear on the question. Can you just repeat that, please? Fine, can you speak uh, Is it now? better now? Is it better now? Yeah, we can hear you, but uh, just repeat the question because I'm not too sure. sure. I so uh, the yield in the quarter has been uh, similar to what we have seen uh, a strong number in first quarter. So uh, I wanted to understand how to look uh, on the same forward, moving forward. Again, like we said, we're not giving further guidance for the rest of the year. Uh, what we've kind of guided towards is on a passenger uh, ASK levels. We are, we are foreseeing that the re revenues is going to be in line with what we had in Q1 of last year. So that's what we are guiding towards. Uh, a combination between that is the yields and the loads. So we are not giving any further guidance in terms of where the yields are going to come in for A, uh, this quarter as well as even for the future quarters. Understood. Thanks. Thanks. That would be it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Farooq Jain from Nivesha Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, so I just wanted to ask on our plans towards regional air routes, uh, how should we look at it in terms of going forward, what portion of our revenues could be from these regional destinations and uh, what portion of our revenues are currently from these uh, regional destinations? Uh, regional as in I'm referring to the subsidized routes. We, were, we had a number of routes that were part of the RAN scheme that we had. Over a period of time, obviously, we've kind of, uh, the number of routes have come down. Having said that, we've continued to operate those even outside of the RAN scheme. So, and we classify them in our, uh, in our ATR fleet that we have because those are the ones where we, we largely focus on from a regional standpoint. That contributes roughly around in the again the single low single digits to mid in terms of contribution uh, to the overall revenue, but they are an important component from a feed air traffic standpoint because they then feed into our larger networks of the of the A320 and the 321s and then also the international. So, so again to Peter's earlier point, it's it's a stepped approach in terms of our strategy. We build from the regional, then we reach out to the non-metros, to the metros, and then international. So it's an important element of our overall strategy. But uh, given the, the scale that we have, at least for the A320 fleet that we have, relative to that, it's a smaller fleet. It's close to 45 aircraft that are operating. It's probably one of the biggest set of fleets in the regional domain. Uh, so that, that's, that's broadly, I think, in terms of the the regional fleet question that you had. Right, uh, Gaurav, but uh, when we see, when we look at the other airlines, they have uh, repeatedly have had the tender, they have, they tend to usually operate there for the first initial years and then they tend to stop operating on those routes. In terms of Indigo going forward, can we expect the routes being operated on these subsidized routes increase or how is that trend going to be? I don't think you can make any prediction along that line because even these routes are different routes. Some of them are from non-metro to non-metro, very sort of tier three or even tier four type of cities 
between those cities and, and, and doing, doing quite well. Some others are feeding, if you wish, into some of the larger metros and from there providing good connectivity. And some of them, and that's why this scheme is very effective for the market, it's, it's meant to be a startup uh, and a generator for, for creating new routes. And as every sort of entrepreneurial approach, some of them succeed and some of them after a while don't succeed and then, then we suspend until, until the, a moment in the future. So I would not be able to feel comfortable to give any numbers, so, you know, that's a percentage stop and open and specifically here or there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aditya Mohya from Codex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, I, uh, I hope I'm audible to all. Yes, Aditya. Yes, Aditya. Thank you. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with my first question. Uh, in the past few quarters, we've been seeing yields um, go up, even though fuel cost per ESK is coming down. Could you give us a sense of uh, what is uh, driving this phenomenon for Indigo? And the related question is that uh, with us now seeing a decent amount of capacity being added by Indigo as the years of Indigo on this year, do you expect this trend to reverse uh, sometime in this year? I think the trend was largely because uh, there was limited capacity while we've added, but uh, there was capacity that was getting taken out from uh, at an overall industry level. So that kind of enabled or gave the support from a yield standpoint. Uh, and that's the phenomena that has played out since Q1 of 24 uh, until Q4 of uh, 24. Uh, again, we are testing out what Q1 is going to be look like. So we are looking at what the levels of yields as well as load factors are going to be, and that's why we're saying that we are foreseeing that the overall PRASC level is going to be similar to what we had in Q1 24. Beyond that, we are not giving any kind of a, uh, estimate or a guidance. We just want to Understood. see how Q1 plays. Uh, Understood. The second question what I had was, again, taking the two from what you said earlier, could you give us a sense of how many, uh, what's the share in your ASK of foreign travelers, domestic and um, kind of whole, uh, international combined travel? Yeah. What is uh, this share in the ASK of foreign travelers versus what what is Wall Street let's say three forward? Give us a sense of how let's say the brand of Indigo is getting appreciated. I think you should make a difference, and I, I, I probably that's if I understand your question correct. We have a share of ASKs international and domestic. That share is anywhere between 25 and 27 percent quarter over quarter in terms of ASKs. That's the ASK share as a total share. Then we have the number of flights, which is a different ratio, but let's stick to ASKs for a while. Then we welcomed last year 107, 106.7 to be precise, customers uh, on board of the network. This is a mixture of domestic, or I should say Indian uh, consumers and non-Indian consumers. Those non-Indian consumers, some of them are overseas living, some of them are, are having different sort of uh, uh, point of place of, of residence. So it's very difficult to differentiate that. What we can say, though, is that with the further increase of, one, our own international network, and two, the increase of code shares, that we see an increasing share of sort of non-Indian travelers on, on our network. But the vast, vast, vast majority, a number significantly higher than our ASK share, are still Indian consumers. And again, that speaks, I think, to the growth of the Indian market and many of the new destinations which we have opened, um, for example, those in Central Asia, we see a high demand in the, from the Indian consumer side in, uh, in um, uh, making use of these travel options. Thank you. Uh, those are my questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that will be our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Peter Elbers for closing comments. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us today evening. The financial year 2024 has been a year of really many remarkable achievements and milestones. Moving to the next financial year, we're highly energized by the growth path ahead of us, adding more than one aircraft every week. The journey towards 2030 will be cemented by an increasing number of planes, an increasing number of happy customers, and a network that will allow us to 
further enable our purpose of giving wings to the nation by connecting people and aspirations. Thank you for joining and wishing you a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Indigo, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.